So good morning, everybody. Um, my paper. Um, I can scroll here. OK, my paper focuses on the content related to prehistory and archaeology published in the journal Le Co du Monde Savant, especially in its initial years. Rather than a systematic survey, it intends to highlight special topics that might be of in some interest in the discussions in the present Enrique Symposium. L'Eco was published weekly in Paris from 1834 to 1846, established and directed for many years by Nere Boubet. The journal uh, aimed at a large scale popularization of science and technology, intending to present a summary of the most important news that happened within the savant world to the public, both lay and specialist, and constituted a relevant facet of Bubé's ex professional activities, namely as a science popularizer. Simon Suzanne Nere Bubé was born in Toulouse on May 12, 1806, and died in August 2, 1862, in Luchon. Although he is currently little known, he experienced a certain prestige in his days. Boubet was one of the founders of the Société Géologique de France in 1830, and a regular active presence in the sessions, besides belonging to several other scientific associations. The contemporary French intellectual context as manifested in science and technology matters, was then a propelling force for science popularization. Within that context, in the words of Robert Fox, I quote, science occupied a central place in French society and culture. The overriding pattern was one of science's growing prominence, both in governmental policy and in public perceptions of its importance in the life of the nation. End of quotation. L'Eco du Monde Savant published its first issue on April 10, 1834, and lasted until 1846, publishing more than 6,000 pages over 13 years. The first issue announced the intention to appear twice a week, which in fact happened only in the third year, from January 1836 onwards, when the journal is split into two different sections. On Thursday, Thursdays, it informed about astronomy, meteorology, physics, chemistry, mechanics, industrial economy, archaeology, and history. On Sundays, it published matters relative to zoology, physiology, botany, paleontology, mineralogy, geology, and geography. Inside, Leco was subdivided into seven sections, discussions of the week, scientific courses, news, archaeologic bulletin, proposed premiums and advertisements. That general structure subsisted roughly unchanged until the end of the journal's life. In 1839, Leco went to the hands of Adrien, the Viscount of Lavalette, and by 1844, the Juno had proved itself to be a great success. The subtitle became the all-embracing encyclopedic review of the works of scientists of all countries in all sciences. It displayed more than 10 different thematic sections, and collaborators included several influential scientists, as Bravais, Becquerel, De Candolle, Dobré, Bouril saint vincent Pogendorf, among others. An important feature perceived through reading the pages of Leco is that it intended to connect the uh, deep France, meaning everywhere that was not Paris, with the capital, the eternal center. News about scientific developments, meetings, museums, learned societies, publications, and naturalists from the provinces were constant. Provision savants, in the words of Robert Fox, were an indispensable element in gathering vogue for the collecting and the study of specimens. A sense of native proudness, particularly under Boubet's rule, 
may be detected here and there too. These aspects are present in and relevant to the articles on archaeology and prehistory in Le Co. As mentioned, Le Co published the section Bulletin Archaeologique, which was through uh, which was thought to be a privileged space for disseminating archaeological news and contents mixed with those on prehistory. Why did the journal include those topics? The reason seemed clear because for Bobé, the chief editor, geology and prehistory were both parts of natural history. I quote, all our readers have understand, understood the philosophy that makes us mix the scientific news of Leco with the archaeological news. All the natural sciences are summed up in geology, with, which is the history of the earth, the history of its rocks, the history of the animals and plants that populated the globe in ancient times. In a word, the ancient history of the world until the appearance of man. Archaeology, that science of it, the first times of humanity, often throws light on geology, and it often borrows in its turn from the geologist the fruit of his observations, so that these two sciences, which lead to the same point in the past, the appearance of man, will serve each other on a counterproof when we try to determine the age of the human race. Indeed, as explained today by Claudine Cohen and in other papers by her, in the middle of the 19th century, the sciences of prehistory of man, paleontology and prehistoric archaeology, were founded as disciplines aimed at reconstructing from anatomical and cultural remains the very ancient history of humanity. In France, it belongs to Jacques Boucher de Perth to have first demonstrated the existence of fossil men by making the proof of the contemporaneity of tools carved by human hands with the bone remains of so-called antediluvian animals. End of quotation. However, the scientific community in France and outside was not entirely enthusiastic about accepting the notion of fossil humans. In a time when absolute geochronologic dating was not available, stratigraphy and geology were key scientific fields for the discussions, as well as was history, which brought ancient traditions, testimonies, and even mythologies of different cultures in support to the fossil or antediluvian human beings, as they were called. Boubé himself affirms in his Manual of Geology published in 1836, that since the appearance of man, there have positively occurred deluges of which the history of peoples preserves the tradition. A relevant point of debate was then the geological deluges and the biblical flood. It is well known that a non-negligible group of naturalists saw no conflict between a long-lasting history of the earth and the creation stories in Genesis. Rudwick alerts that the diluvial theory deserves to be taken seriously as an attempt explanation to some extremely puzzling physical features. The geological deluge was eventually recognized as having been far earlier in Earth's history than any event recorded by literate human societies. Among geologists, this gradual dissociation was generally amical, not acrimonious. The coup plunged into these debates early in its history. The section Bulletin Archaeologique published information from learned associations like the Société Royale des Antiquaires de France, which covered membership and discoveries of all kinds of material evidence. From number 37 onwards, dated August 1, 1834, Leco became the official journal of archaeological societies. But that was not the unique way archaeology and prehistory appeared on its pages. Leco also published originals or reproduced articles from other journals, a common practice at that time. Besides the articles and the bulletin archaeologique, 
Le Co issued the complete records of a course on archaeology and provided transcriptions of legal processes against falsifiers, a significant challenge that, as pointed out by Kulujin Cohen, I quote, sheds light on the historical conditions for mustering evidence as proof in these disciplines. End of quotation. Several issues of LECO, for example, detail the lengthy trial of false antiques of a Roman villa in the town of Nerac, called the Affaire Nerac. Let us look closely now at the variety of contents in LECO. Since its first issue, it announced the foundation of new societies related to archaeology and history in the provinces, praising local experts and amateurs. One reads, for example, that in number uh, uh, two, an archaeology society was recently founded in Montpellier. Mr. Bégé, préfet de Euro, has put the great has put the greatest zeal into assisting this useful association. Also, a literary and archaeological society has just been founded in Narbonne. It specifically proposes to bring together and make known the large number of monuments that are widespread in the district of Narbonne. Mr. Tournal, uh, son, is the secretary general. The ministry has already favored this association via the concession of superb premises, some funds, and delivery of precious books. Another uh, new news. Uh, under the name of Société des Antiquaires de l'Ouest, a society has just been formed in Poitiers for the research, conservation, and description of monuments and historical documents in the provinces between the Loire and the Dordogne. The society in Arbonne and Tournal were to become relevant in the field. Paul Tournal, born 1805 uh, and died in 1872, from the same generation as Boubet and his countrymen from the Midi region, was a pharmacist and prehistorian, born and dead in Arbonne, who founded the Narbonne Museum. He's frequently mentioned in Leco and occasionally collaborated with it, authoring some text, texts. He understood, he undertook uh, excavations in the caves of Bees in 1827, being one of the first to propose the contemporaneity between prehistoric humans and certain extinct animal species. Claudine mentioned this fact today in his, her talk. He published several texts on this subject, the most known being Considération théorique sur le caverne aux semins, that appeared in the Annales de Chimie et de Physique in 1833. Other researchers, namely Jules de Cristol and Marcel de Serre, will make similar discoveries, but a year later. Together with the Belgian Philippe Schmerling, all of them present in the pages of Le Co, they will form a group who believed that they had unearthed human bones from before the flood, an idea that attracted strong criticism from various voices from many institutions, a famous one being, being Jules Desnoyers at the Société Géologique de France. In Le Co, the fossil bones found in caves in France received strong attention for a long-lasting period, on many occasions compared with the situation in other countries. Marcel de Serre contributed to writing several texts. As an example, it's worth reproducing part of his article published in Le Co number 29 uh, from 17 October 1834. Uh, I quote, there is, however, a point which, in the eyes of certain geologists, still needs to be cleared up. It is the coincidence of the time and of, of the filling of the caves with that of the appearance of men. In this respect, the new caves of Lozère are of some importance, for they show that the human bones are at least of the same date as the other organic remains associated with them, if not older. What is certain is that the remains of our species are founded there, 
not only confused with them, but moreover, buried uh, below the layer in which we see the bones of bears of lost species. The cave of Nabriga, whose extent is about 300 meters, is the most considerable of the four. As for the organic debris that we observe there, here is what results from the still somewhat superficial examination that we have made of it. First of all, the bones of bears are singularly in excess, and among the Yena remains, we have only collected a single tooth and two balls of album gecko. But fortunately, this tooth is sufficient to characterize this species the species to which it belonged. Here, Marcel de Serre uses clear stratigraphic geological reasoning to make his point, emphasizing that the remains of our species are found buried below the layer in which we see the bones of bears of lost species, which is, crucial issue, which is a crucial issue for the debate, as it is a confirmation of the antiquity of those humans. Unfortunately, we do not have time to present here in detail this specific theme in Le Co. As previously said, a special section of Le Co was dedicated to the reproduction of courses taught at prestigious institutions in Paris by no less prestigious scholars. A large panoply encompassing different branches of science, whether applied or not. At the end of each course, all the lessons published in the journal were collected and published in a single volume, already revised by the teachers and sold by Leco. The list of courses is long, and among them was archaeology, taught by the respected archaeologist Desiré Raoul Rochette, superintendent of antiquities at the Bibliothèque Royale. Along the years 1835 and 1836, the lessons were carefully transcribed. A specialist in ancient Greece and Rome, Raoul Rochette taught indeed about it, but also about Asia. I quote Leco, now the learned professor of the Royal Library switches again the subject of his lecture. He noticed that all eyes have been turning for some time now to Asia, that noble cradle of the human race where once appeared the white man, the eldest son of Homo sapiens, the man of the Caucasus. He, therefore, chose as the subject of his current course this primitive homeland of our ancestors. Finally, the pages of Leco are an authentic catalog that inventories archaeological findings, paying especially attention to Roman, Celtic, and medieval times. Tombs and the objects found inside, such as, uh, or as skeletons of soldiers in armor, as well as potteries, coins, inscriptions, and so forth, are uh, all detailed, detailedly reported, as in the following excerpt. I quote, we have just recently discovered at danville forge Meuse, several stone tombs, eight feet in length, which contained fairly well-preserved bones. In one of them was a saber worn by oxidation and an unearthen worm of a very elegant firmness, ornamented with several moldings in relief of perfect execution. Some findings were considered to date back to the invasion of the Kingdom of the Franks, as one made by Boucher de Pert. I quote, it was recently discovered in the, in the pit bog of Esterbeuf, near saint valery Somme, a canal. This boat seems to date back to the first times of navigation, or at least to the invasion of the Normans. This singular monument acquired by Mr. Boucher de Perte is now deposited in the meeting place of the Société d'Emulation of Amiens, which he presides. More than just a collecting phenomenon, the digging into ancient times responded to efforts of building up a past, a tradition rooted in classical times, what was not difficult due to, due to the actual uh, Roman solid presence in the territory now turned into France. According to James Sackett, 
Antiquarians insisted upon peopling the few millennia that separated the Roman occupation of France and England from the biblical beginning of the humankind with tribes and nations mentioned in historical records. For a while, Noah's descendants or even refugees from Troy held the feud. But ultimately, antiquarians settled on the Celtic-speaking Gauls and Britons who had confronted the Romans. The notion of a rich Celtic past appealed to national sentiment, especially when flavored with a bit of romantic drood money. So, to conclude, it must be said that Lecaux proved a fantastic historical source where both heated, updated scientific debates and institutional information can be found alongside detailed reports of historical and archaeological discoveries. Therefore, he deserves a careful, deeper plunge into his, its pages that I could not perform here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Have you some question? Yes. Thank you. Just one question. Why did the journal disappear? The journal? Yeah. Well, it's not clear. Maybe, well, they they were a little tired of doing the, the, the journal. Uh, they, they had um, uh, at the end, uh, Lavalette had to fire one of his collaborators, uh, secretary of the journal, and it was a long process, uh, law process. And uh, this uh, shaked a little the journal, and in, uh, the reason is not explicit, but I think this could have hap uh, helped to, to stop the journal, but it, it worked for a long time. If, compared with uh, all the similar ones at that time. Jody Bourgeois from University of Washington. Um, where now is this preserved? Is it, is there, how did you? The you journal. Know, the journal, yeah. It is, um, well, a uh, large part is uh, digitized on Gallica, the Bibliothèque Nationale, uh, the France uh, online, but also uh, there is a complete collection in the um, Biodiversity Heritage Library, it, which is online too uh, in the United States. So you can find the complete pages and everything. Hello. The, the other journal in Paris, slightly older, who was very important, was, for instance, the Journal de Rosier. Uh, do you know if uh, both uh, journals have uh, had any uh, relation? I, I didn't find any relation between those journals. What is um, in the beginning of, the, of Le Co, uh, Boubet says that um, it will replace uh, the journal. Oh, I forgot the name. as important. Oh, uh, we we'll replace another uh, journal that was not published anymore, and I can find the name, but now I'm I forgot completely. But it was an important one. But uh, there was a no. I I never saw the connection. Yeah, one thing I find quite fascinating about a journal like this is that it's very divided up into individual disciplines, but then on the other hand, they're all together in one journal. So if I was someone buying one, I it, it kind of implies at some level that you're supposed to be interested in all these different disciplines, but in fact that they're rather separate. So I, I suppose it's a question about in the case of archaeology, is is this a forum in which the relationship between archaeology and those other sciences is talked about or brought forward? Or is this just something where people just assume that that's the way that science works? No, I think it's a special forum. 
uh, to bring forward uh, archaeology because, uh, as I quoted Boubet, he thought everything was together uh, in, well, part of natural history, but geology was the most encompassing uh, science, and so everything should be linked to the to the, the best understanding, to the better understanding. And also, it was uh, a popularization uh, journal, so uh, it wanted to, it aimed at uh, instruct uh, people in general. So, and it was uh, sold uh, to France and also to other countries. They had um, uh, representatives in Germany, in uh, Switzerland. Agassiz was one of the subscribers of the, the journal. Um, I found it in the Agassiz inventory. So that uh, the, the collection, the complete collection of Leco, at least before he, he moved to the, to the States, to Cambridge in, in the States. So, uh, scientists and lay people also uh, read the the journal. Okay. Uh, Sylvia, it's amazing to see how much uh, dairy their accounts are, because the people you mentioned, like Paul Tournat, Le Marcel de Serre, and all these people in the 30s uh, were not at all in the mainstream science. They were very, as we discussed before, very marginal and even uh, pushed back by, by official science. So it's very interesting how much uh, Nere Boubet and his collaborators went to look for these uh, very uh, marginal knowledge and uh, put them on the, for on the forefront uh, mm -hmm. of of the distribution of knowledge uh, in France yeah. and elsewhere. I think that this was an explicit uh, task that Boubet gave to himself. He was from Toulouse and very, very young, he moved to Paris. He studied in the museum, as a, was trained by uh, De Blanville. And very young, he connected to the to the mainstream science in Paris, so he was kind, a kind of liaison, and he was he, he, in the pages. He is all the time saying that uh, we must show the, what the the, marvel, the 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 good research that is done in in the periphery of France, say. But he he doesn't use periphery. He says in the in the hinterlands and so and i think that's why he is giving all this um, um light on those people they are like himself and is the connection let's say that uh, Boubé has a succession with the Boubé house has a store in Place Saint Michel in Paris until uh, 2002. And when I was a student at the Sorbonne University, I bought some booklets in Nere store and uh, three volumes on fossils. And Boubet was selling cast for all lycée and university. We saw in Poitiers University two days ago, cast in the collection of University of Poitiers. Yes. Thank you so much. Now we have a, a break.